and good evening everyone and thank you all so much for joining me tonight i'm here with ann yorks and i'm really excited because i haven't eaten today and i now get to watch cookies which is which is good for me because that is the most interaction i should probably have with cookies right now but ann yorks is the founder of the flower box one of the top online resources for cookie decorating supplies and tutorials and is the instructor of three in-depth crafty classes teaches monthly online classes and hosts in-person classes as a self-taught baker and cookie artist, Anne is passionate about helping home bakers find joy and purpose through cookies and her new cookbook, The Crafted Cookie, a beginner's guide to baking and decorating cookies for every occasion, is on sale now. Anne lives in Center Hall, Pennsylvania, with her husband and two daughters. So Anne, thank you so much for joining me tonight and, of course, tempting me out of my diet. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be doing this cookie demo tonight. It's coming straight out of the book. And I'm going to give um, a couple of tips actually before I jump into the cookie decorating. Now tonight I'm decorating in Center Hall, Pennsylvania, and I'm in my cookie studio. So I have a separate kitchen um, from my house where I just use it to decorate cookies, which is awesome. I can make a mess in here and still go home and not worry about it. <laughs> so um, the cookies that I'm going to be decorating tonight are some cookies from our Father's Day grilling set. And I'm going to show you how to do a mustard bottle, a hot dog, and a cheese cheeseburger. There are three of the cookies from the set um, and I'll show you the page that you can find these on. It starts actually on page uh, 101 or 110 with the um, with the uh, photos. Now in the beginning of the book um, there is the royal icing recipe and I actually have a little sample of the royal icing um, in this dish here. So this is what royal icing will look like when you follow the recipe straight out of the mixer. And this is a uh, stiff icing consistency. So when you pull that spatula out, you're going to see there's no movement of that icing. Um, and we're that's actually a great consistency for when we are going to do the little lettuce leaves on this cheeseburger. So that's our stiff icing consistency. Then um, the most common consistency, and I have all my icing ready to go in bags, is our piping and flooding. So the piping is the thicker icing. It's going to have a decorating tip on it. And this is the icing that I use to do the outlines on the cookies and the details on the cookies. So it's a little bit... Um, thicker than the flooding because that's going to hold its shape as we pipe those details. But I like to have what I consider a soft peak uh, piping icing. So I'm just adding some water to this royal icing to get it to that soft peak consistency. And I like to compare this um, as you're making your own icing at home to a uh, soft serve ice cream. So when you pull your spatula out, you should see that icing start to curl over just like it would um, when you're making a soft serve cone. So it has just a little bit of motion. And I, the reason I like this consistency is it's a little bit easier to squeeze. It's easier on the hands. You don't want that super stiff icing. Um, that's going to be hard to decorate a whole set of cookies. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of water and I'm going to thin this royal icing down to the flooding consistency. So I have my flood icing already prepared in these icing bags and this is the icing that I'm going to use to flow onto the surface of the cookie um, and we want it to flow off of our spatula. If it doesn't flow off the spatula, it's not going to flow onto the surface of the cookie. So that's kind of an essential um, uh, tip to look for when you're making your flood icing. So this has some flow to it, but it's still sort of just plopping down into the bowl. So I'm going to add about another teaspoon of water. I'm just estimating here. Um, and there are tips. Um, there's a cookie decorating 101 section in the beginning of the crafted cookie with tips on how to make these icing consistencies um, with some great photos as well. So icing consistency is pretty important when it comes to cookie decorating. 
So now we have a nice flow that's just ribboning into our dish and it's flowing off the spatula so we know that that's going to flow onto the surface of the of the cookie. Um, also in that cookie decorating 101 section is tips on how to color your royal icing, how to measure for your cookie projects, how much you'll need, um, how to build icing bags. There's some great step-by-step -step photos just showing how to put the coupler in and put your tip on. So um, I definitely had the beginner decorator in mind when I was creating that section. So let's get started. I'm going to show you two techniques. These are the two most basic techniques uh, in cookie decorating, which is going to be outlining the cookie and flooding the cookie. So let's start with this really cute little mustard bottle. And the mustard bottle and the ketchup bottle, um, the instructions are the same, just different icing colors. And this cookie is actually a crayon cookie cutter. Um, but with a little bit of cookie cutter vision, you can see it actually makes the perfect ketchup and mustard as well. So it's always fun when you can take one cookie cutter and turn it into something else. So I have my piping icing and I have a tip number two. Um, in the book, you'll see there are step-by-step -step photos with step-by-step -step written instructions. And I always make a note of what tip is on the icing bag. So to start the outlines of the cookie, I'm just going to pipe a line around the top of the lid. And I'm just using a gentle hand squeeze. When I get to a corner, I'll touch down and then I'll pick that tip back up and continue to outline that cookie. Now I like to outline the cookies with the piping icing because it just serves as a wall to hold that flood icing in place. So now I have that mustard bottle um, outlined. And if you are looking for um, some practice, there is a piping practice sheet in the book as well. You can copy that and practice piping lines, piping circles, um, using up your leftover icing. So now that this cookie is outlined, I have my uh, flood icing. Now this is that icing that was the second icing consistency that flowed off the spatula. This is what I'm going to use to flood in this cookie. And I just have this um, little piping bag here and I'm just gonna trim off the tip. I love using these little scissors that I got in the school aisle. Um, they're nice and small that gives me control over that trim and I just trim off the tiniest little snip so I have control over that icing. So now I'm just going to flood in two of these three sections and the reason I'm not flooding that section in the middle is because we're going to let these icing areas dry um, and then come back and flood in that center section so that the cookie has a little definition to that lid. Now notice how generous I am when I squeeze that icing onto the cookie. I do have what's called a cookie scribe tool here at my work surface, which is great for tapping icing into place. But if you flood your cookies nice and generous like I do, um, you really don't need to pick up this tool. The icing will just self-level and flow into place. And so this is really um, helpful just for getting into small areas or popping air bubbles. But typically I don't use this because I'm very generous with that flood icing. Now, one thing about royal icing is that it dries like a candy uh, on the surface. And so it has a little bit of a crunch to it. And before we add any of these details, we need to give this a chance to dry. So I actually have a dry cookie already prepared so that I can show you the next step. And typically I will um, work on my cookies. If I'm decorating two dozen cookies for a project, I will work on those in phases, outlining and flooding each design. And I'll try to let those cookies dry in front of a fan for about an hour before I come back in to add any of the details. Now a little small space like this on the lid, um, that would be a quick dry. You know, you could let 15 minutes pass and come back 
to this cookie because it's such a small icing area. But on these bigger areas where you're blushing cheeks or adding black details, um, a highly contrasting icing color on there, you definitely want to allow some time to dry. That way you won't see colors bleeding into each other. That's kind of a common problem with cookie decorating is seeing the black um, kind of blending into the background. So now that we have that flooded in, we're ready for the details. And I have one that's already dry and good to go. So now for the details, um, I still have that tip number two on my icing bag. And I'm just going to add that squiggly line. Again, a nice even squeeze. And I'm really just letting that icing fall onto the lid in place. So just a little squiggle to add some texture to that cookie. And now let me show you how to do this um, face. This is actually kind of a fun way to add the eyes. Instead of just using um, just a black, we're going to add a little catch light to this, to this eye. All right, so I'm ready to add this in. I'm just actually wiggling my scribe tool into my tip. I had a little bit of dry icing in the tip of my bag and I just need to clean that out to, to get that icing flowing again. Okay, so I prefer to have the eyes a little bit wider set. You can see on this ketchup bottle, the eyes are a little bit close compared to the um, mustard and it's a small detail but I find paying attention to that does matter and I'll make the eyes nice and wide it almost has like a kawaii look to it and then I'll center this the smile in the middle so let's take a look at how to make these eyes it's um, we're gonna add this black flood icing And then while that black flood icing is still wet, I'm going to add a tiny dot of gray. That's the little catch light in the um, mustard's eyes. And that really brings this cookie to life. And this is the same icing consistency. So when I add that dot onto the black, it just kind of melts into place. It doesn't look like um, super bulgy. And you can see that the eye just has a nice rounded smooth look to it. So we're almost done with this cookie. This is one of the accent cookies in this set and the cheeseburger which I'm going to show you last. This is the feature cookie. This one has a couple of extra sets. So this mustard is intentionally um, made to be approachable just so that you don't spend a ton of time when you're doing Cookie, uh, cookie decorating platters. So just a nice gentle squeeze as I add that smile. And now I'm going to use, um, this is optional. This cookie looks super cute without the blushed cheeks, but I'm going to use this pink carnation dust. This is FDA approved um, from Crystal Colors. And this is just a little dash. I have a, a Wilton food, food safe brush. And I'm just going to gently swirl that rosiness onto the mustard's cheeks. Again, this is an optional step. Um, but those blush cheeks really do add a cute little element to that cookie. So that's what our mustard looks like from this grilling set. And again, as I mentioned, this hot dog, uh, hot dog, no, this ketchup is uh, actually the same cookie cutter and the same steps. So you'll see that on the platter in the book um, that you can follow those instructions for both cookies. All right, so that's uh, one of our uh, accent cookies in this set. And let me also show you the hot dog. I really don't think um, any cookout is complete unless you have a few hot dogs on the grill. And so um, let me show you how to make that hot dog. I do want to mention that in this platter um, with the royal icing, the color that I used to make the hot dog, the 
actual hot dog color is one of the few icing colors that is a mixed color in the book. Most of the colors in the book, they're uh, using the food colors that um, directly from the bottle. So you're not mixing uh, two drops of this, two drops of that, except for this hot dog. To get just the right color for the hot dog, I actually use two drops of brown and two drops of red. And so there is a tip on the intro page to this grilling platter um, where there's a list of all the icing colors that you're going to need to do these cookies that you do need to mix those two colors to make that hot dog color. But it does make the, the perfect color. So let's take a look at that cookie as well. I have a hot dog ready to go. And again, I'm just going to start with the outlines on the button. So I have a pastel brown. This is the piping consistency. This is the thicker icing for outlines and for details. And I have a tip number two on the icing bag. Um, that tip number two is the most common tip I use for outlines. I just like the stream of icing that it pipes out. So let's go ahead and we're just going to outline the bottom of the bun. And then I am going to add a gentle curve right about here just to follow the shape of the bun on the top and touch down. Now I'm going to pipe our hot dog. And again, this is that red and brown mixed color. Still tip number two on here. And just a nice even squeeze as I pipe that hot dog. Now, if you have decorated uh, cookies before, you might feel like you're up for the challenge of making all of the cookies in this set. But if you are a first time decorator, I suggest picking just one cookie um, just to get started. So the hot dog is a great choice because it's approachable to do. Um, it's super fun and popular. And, um, and it's not too many icing colors either. All right, so now it's time to do the flooding again. And I'm going to flood the bun first. I have this light brown flooding icing. This is the icing with the flow. And I'm going to trim my icing bag. And again, just a tiny snip is good. You don't want to um, cut too large of an opening because you'll lose control over the flow of that icing. So now I'm just going to flood in that bun. Again, being nice and generous as I flood in that icing. Now, one thing that is really cool about royal icing is that because it dries uh, smooth and flat, you do get some natural definition lines between these icing areas. So that line is created just by letting this white icing or this brown icing dry before we come back and flood in the hot dog. If we flooded the hot dog now, you would lose some of that dimension between those different icing areas and the hot dog wouldn't really look like it's sitting in the bun quite as much. So letting those icing areas dry is really essential in creating kind of that interesting dimension or texture to this style of decorated cookies. So I will pop this in front of a fan. Now, you might be wondering, what kind of fan <laughs> am I using? I actually use a floor fan that I picked up at Walmart, and I just have it in front of my bakery rack. And it's just blowing across my cookie sheets. And drying the icing using a fan really speeds up the um, drying process. It also gives your cookies a really nice shine to them uh, when they're all dry. They definitely have a little bit of a shine. I'm trying to catch the light so you can see that. And um, it also reduces other icing issues like color bleeding or cracks and craters in small icing colors. So drying your cookies in front of a fan can be super 
um, helpful. It's not wrong to just let your cookies, um, you know, dry on the cookie sheet without a fan. They just will have a more matte looking finish to them. So that you can definitely do that. And when I first started de decorating cookies, that's how I did it too. All right. So now we're going to add that reddish brown um, hot dog color. And I have that flood icing ready to go. Um, you can see in my flooding bags, I've just tied off a knot at the end. Um, if your bag is a little full and you don't have room to tie the knot, you can also use a bag tie. That will keep your icing from shooting up and out <laughs> of your icing bag. So if you're decorating with children, um, this is a great set for Father's Day. If um, you're going to be decorating with kids, I definitely recommend closing off that end of the bag so that you don't have um, a big mess when you're when you're all done with the decorating. So now I'm just going to flood in that hot dog again. And usually when I'm flooding, I like to just kind of hit the perimeter first and get a nice even edge. And then I'll flood in the center. I don't know that there's a wrong way to flood in, but that's generally how I do it. Some people do not like to see the outlines um, from their piping. And so one way to conceal that is to just bump that flood up and over that outline. And that gives you a little bit more of a seamless edge to that cookie. All right, so we are, I'm gonna let this one dry. Again, We before we add any details to these, the icing does need to set up. And so I do have an already dry um, hot dog ready to go. Um, if you guys have any questions, definitely post them in the comments. Um, I know Drew is monitoring those questions. And so if you have questions about cookie decorating or the book, um, please do ask. I'd be happy to help. All right, so let me show you how to do that little face again. This um, cookie has a face almost similar to the mustard. And I have the black icing, and I'm just going to add that nice rounded eye. And now I'm ready to jump in with the gray and add the little catch light. It's really just a tiny drop of icing. I'm, I'm not even squeezing the bag. I'm almost just letting gravity do the work and letting that dot fall into place. All right, so Anne, we do have a question. Uh, this is from Eileen Germay, and Eileen, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Uh, they would like to know, what tip are you currently using? Yes, Eileen, that is an excellent question. Actually, for these eyes and this little smile, I want the most control over the icing flow. And so I have a tip number one on the black and the gray, whereas all of the outlines that I've showed you so far, they all have that tip number two that I referenced earlier. So when you want more control over your icing, you want to size it down um, to a size smaller uh, than the two. The smaller the number, the smaller the opening. All right, let me show you that blush one more time. And again, I just have my Wilton brush here. I like to dip the brush into this um, carnation pink dust and dab off the excess into the lid. Sometimes this can be overwhelming if you just go right from the jar to the cookie. And then I'm just going to move in a circular motion to add just a little bit of a rosy cheek to the hot dog. All right, so we are almost done with our hot dog. 
Um, but I do want to add the mustard. Now you can add ketchup and mustard um, or actually any hot dog topping that you wanted to try. Cheese, I don't know what you eat on your hot dogs. But in my house, my mom raised me that mustard was the only thing you put on your hot dogs. So that's what I'm going to put on my cookies today. <laughs> uh, we've got two additional questions. Uh, the first one is from Melissa Slayen. How did you go about choosing these designs for your fabulous book? And the next one is from Leah Houston who wants to know what color did you use for the bun and the hot dog? They are beautiful. Yes, Melissa, my husband is a big time girl master. And so a lot of the inspiration for the cookies in the book really came from um, some from my childhood, some from things that I've been inspired by uh, along the way, or just people that I know and what they like to do. So I was excited to do this project because in this set that cheeseburger is one of my favorite cookies from the whole book and so doing the grilling set was a lot of fun so that was the inspiration behind that is just in the summer um, we pretty much grill several times a week and uh, the second question what was that again drew the second question uh, was from leah houston and they'd like to know what color did you, did you use for the bun and the hot dog they are beautiful yeah so i used um actually I'm using the Buckeye Brown for the bun and it's just in a pastel. So when I'm creating a pastel, I'll have my spatula and I'll just put one drop of the gel onto my spatula and then mix it into the icing. If you just squeeze your color directly into the bowl where you're making your colors, it's really easy to add too much and make those lighter colors too dark. So it's the Buckeye Brown for the bun. Um, I used the Buckeye Brown and the super red to make that hot dog color. Um, and again, this is one of the few projects where you actually have to mix two colors in the book. Most of the projects you're coloring directly from the bottle, but for that hot dog, um, because it's sort of a unique color, it is the red plus the brown. In the intro of uh, all 15 of the platters in the book, I do give you an estimate of how much of each icing color you'll need to make and um, just a list of those colors and what consistencies you're going to use them in. So if you need them in both the pipe and the flood or just pipe only, um, like with the green tonight, we're only using green to add the lettuce. And so, um, that is on the intro page to each of the platters just listing out what those icing colors are going to be and if there's a mix like with this hot dog I give instructions on that uh, what two colors are used so I hope that helps you all right so let's add this mustard while I was chatting I did switch the tips from a number two to a number three just because I wanted that mustard to have a substantial look so on the bottle here that's the detail with the number two it's just a little bit of a thinner line but we want a thick uh, line of the mustard so I'm just going to give a good squeeze as I pipe that wavy line going across and that cookie is ready to go and looking super cute. Sometimes when I make these cookies, I'm not sure if I'm hungry for hot dogs or hot dog cookies. <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> so that is, so the ketchup and the mustard and the hot dog are what I consider accent cookies. They take a few, um, they're fewer steps than the feature cookie. So each of the platters in the book, you'll have a couple of accent cookies like the mustard ketchup and hot dog and then you'll have a feature cookie that has a little bit more um, a little bit more detail to it it might be a little bit more challenging to do and that's why there's only one feature cookie per platter so most of the platters have two accent cookies and one feature cookie just to balance out your decorating time a little bit because this can be a little bit of a labor of love um, one of my favorite sections of the book is I do give tips on how to store your icing, how to freeze your cookies, and how to plan your uh, cookie decorating timeline. And I just share what works for me um, just as a busy mom, uh, working mom, you know, how do I fit this in? And so I just share some tips on how you can kind of stage out um, baking, making your icing, and decorating your cookies and how to do that. So I hope that part is helpful. 
All right, let's take a look at this cheeseburger. This is my favorite cookie of the night. And I've already done some outlining and flooding just to give us a little bit of a head start. So the outline and flood, this is the light brown. This is a dark brown. So this, uh, these icings are both Buckeye brown. This one just has less food gel. This has more food gel in it. Um, and then I outlined, it, outlined and flooded uh, those little tomatoes there. So now let's jump in where I left off. Let's see if maybe these need to go side by side. All right, so before, I'm gonna show you how to create this uh, cute texture on the burger. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to pipe the little triangle with the cheese. So I had that tip number three on my golden yellow and I'm just gonna take that off and put tip number two back on. We don't need that uh, thicker stream of icing happening. So I'm just gonna pipe a line right under those tomatoes. Nice, easy squeeze, pulling straight across. And then I'm gonna kinda eyeball it and just drop a dot of icing where I think the center of that burger is to bring that triangle down. Those little guide dots can be super helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a little icing pop there. Don't panic, that happens all the time. And that, that could be just because I wasn't squeezing hard enough, or maybe there's an air bubble in my icing bag. So I'm just gonna touch my tip in there and patch that up. Once that cheese is flooded in, you won't see that there was any kind of pop there at all. All right, so I have another brush that I'm going to be using to dab the texture on the cheeseburger. So I'm just going to, again, small, small snip, and I'm just going to pipe out sort of a little squiggly line of this flood icing. This is the flood icing, not the thicker piping icing. This is the icing with the flow. And so once I just have a little bit of icing on that cheeseburger, I'm gonna take the tip of my brush and I'm just gonna dab that to create that texture. And you can add more icing if you uh, want to see more texture on there. So in that area, I am gonna dab just a little bit more. And I'm just trying to get all the way around. Now this icing uh, will start to set up, this little brown icing. So once you've gone through with one set of dabbing, you can come back in and dab just again, and it'll just continue to add more texture to that burger. And it just kind of gives it a grilled look. So we've got a question from Trish P. Uh, hi, Ann, do you use plastic bottles to flood cookies for large orders, or do you only use bags? Uh, for a really large order, like if I'm doing, let's say I'm doing 200 cookies for a project and they're all squares and it's all white icing, then I do love to use those icing bottles. I just find that the icing stores well in those. Um, there's a 16 ounce size of those bottles that I like to use and I find they're really easy to refill and reuse. But typically, if I'm just doing two to four dozen cookies, which is kind of a standard project size for an event or a gift or whatever, um, I'll use these icing bags because the cleanup is super easy, especially if you don't even have a bag tie on there. Um, once you're done, you can just uh, pitch it and you don't have to wash out all those bottles. So I do still use bottles for those large projects, but typically for something two to four dozen, it's just easier to use those icing bags. All right. Will you grab my... Um, Over there. 
it is time to flood in this cheese. Oh, here it is. I was looking for my, I forgot we used it for the mustard. <laughs> my flood icing for that cheese. And I'm just going to fill in that triangle again, just kind of going around the edge of the triangle. And then flooding down in. Here, the scribe is really helpful in just kind of pulling that icing out to the corners of that cheese. Sometimes your bag can't get into those little nooks and crannies. All right, so now you could probably add the rest of these details, but I don't want to risk dipping into, oh, you know what? I forgot one little step here. That little lower bun also needs to get flooded in. And just have a good squeeze of that light brown. All right. So now we're just gonna let that cookie dry just like the other ones. And once we're all set up, we have that fun texture on there and we still need to add the face, the little lettuce and um, some seeds on the bun. So let's do the lettuce first. And I have a Wilton tip, it's number 352. And this is kind of a cool shape. It has almost like a V cut into it. And I'm actually gonna turn it so that the tip the points are vertical. And then I'm just going to stick my tip into that gap between the bun and the tomatoes. And I'm just gonna give a good squeeze and pull out that lettuce leaf. And this chunky icing, this just adds a really fun texture and a nice bright pop of color um, to this set because this set does have a lot of browns and reds and so I find that the yellow and the green really brighten things up. All right, so now let's jump into the eyes. Again, this is um, black and I'm going to just add those eyes and the little smile. And then I'll add the gray dot for the catch light. Just wiggle the tip in there and add a teeny tiny dot. And now I'll also blush the cheeks. All right, nice and rosy. And we're ready to add just a couple seeds. So I have that light brown piping icing. We want the icing that holds its shape. And we're just gonna add some little teardrops for the seeds on the bun. And that is your cookie. So that's your finished cookie, all ready to go. Um, and then when I'm creating my platter to take to the picnic or the Father's Day celebration, usually I will put that feature cookie front and center just because it's such a uh, eye-catching cookie mm -hmm. and it'll grab all the attention. Absolutely, those look incredible. I am I'm all about the barbecue cookies. Um, <laughs> If you've got a little bit of time, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions, and I know that we've got our, our audience might have a few more things. They may have been taking notes, so uh, for the people in the audience who are watching tonight, if you have questions, if you weren't sure if this was the right moment for questions, I'm now telling you, this is your moment. Ask your <laughs> questions. Um, take a couple minutes, think about what you want to say while you do. 
Uh, and my first question for you is, how did you get into baking? What was the, the start of this journey for you? Yeah, I um, have been a baker since a young age. I used to bake with my mom in the kitchen. And so I just grew up um, loving to bake everything from cookies to cupcakes to cakes. And then I got really serious about cookie decorating um, about 13 years ago and um, just started investing a lot of time into learning how to make royal icing, um, trying to understand uh, all the different decorating techniques. And then once I got some of those basics down, I started um, doing some of my own designs, my own techniques, and it just sort of grew from there. But it really was a childhood passion. Um, I've always loved sweet things, and I still eat the cookies. Um, people ask all the time, do you still eat cookies? Yes, I still eat cookies. <laughs> all right, that was, that was my follow-up question, so well answered there, well planned. Um, what is, and I know this might be hard, what is your favorite kind of cookie? Is it a chocolate chip cookie? Is it a sugar cookie? What is what is the perfect Ann York's cookie? Yeah, actually my favorite cookie is chocolate chip. It's such a classic and I feel like it's picking vanilla as my favorite flav flavor, but um, I just feel like I love chocolate chips. I love them. I love them chewy. I love them with a little bit of crunch. Um, I When it comes to cookies, I'll try any cookie. I am an equal... <laughs> cookie opportunity person so yeah. um yeah don't say no to cookies <laughs> yeah, I, you know what i think it's a good rule for life is if, if you are offered cookies say yes um, yes i agree <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the crafted cookie what was the yeah. process like putting together a book for for this you know it's one thing you've got it all in your head and you know how things work and you've got the website and you've been teaching people but to sit there with someone and say this picture this is the way you should write the, how, how what was that like it was a really cool experience, Drew. I um, I have always enjoyed writing, and so it was kind of neat to take two passions, writing and cookie decorating, and do a project um, that involved both of those interests. So when I started the book writing process, it was um, about three months into the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so that was really interesting because it was a little bit of a weird time for our family. I have children. They were in virtual school. My husband was working from home. Um, I run an online business for cookie decorating supplies. And so our employees were working from home and our family was actually keeping the business going um, just to keep everybody as safe as possible. And so getting started in that atmosphere, um, I think in a way was a really good thing because it was sort of something new on my plate, something that I was really excited to do. I felt like it totally just my creativity um, went to town. And so it was a really awesome uh experience i think during the pandemic i know um that was a tough time for a lot of people but i really kind of just you know hit hit the hit the work and and worked on this book to kind of uh, have an outlet to be honest and so um i started with sketching out um my ideas and i worked with the team at the ann clark cookie cutter company to help design some new cookie cutters that were going to be featured in this book um, actually the grill which is in the the same platter in the book that i didn't prep that one for the demo tonight so you can check out the book to learn how to do that one the grill is one of the new cutters featured in there um, and then I started making cookie samples and I went through the process of decorating hundreds and hundreds of cookies. Um, my photographer, Elise Salucci, she's um, in the suburbs of Philly. Mm -hmm. And so I had to pack up and ship all of the cookies to her oh, wow. in every single phase um, that they're shown in the book. So all of the different steps that I just showed you now, I shipped the cookies in all of those steps, plus all of the finished cookies for sort of those hero type photos. So it was a really um, involved process with just the planning and the execution of all of the cookie projects. And then of course there was the writing. Um, just for months, my desk in my office 
I had trays of cookies all around me and I just used the actual cookies to write um, the instructions on how to decorate the cookies. But I especially loved giving the cookies fun titles. I loved naming the platters. I really enjoyed writing the intros to the platters. Um, it was just a chance to show the inspiration behind each of the sets that I created um, and just have a little fun with it. So it was a really cool process writing the book. Yeah, it sounds incredible. Um, so I'm going to limit myself to just one last question because we've got a bunch of great questions in the comments and they matter more than me, frankly. Um, what, as I sort of alluded to in the beginning, uh, I am, I'm someone who loves to cook. I cannot bake to save my life. I find it way too precise and then I get flustered because the muffins are sagging in the middle and you have to stick a straw on them and it's awful. What would be your number one piece of advice to someone who is wants to bake but feels intimidated or has had bad experiences baking and now it's a thing for them what what would you what would you say to help someone yeah if you're um just getting into baking or um you know don't have a ton of baking experience for me i think planning ahead just a little bit will make that experience the most fun. So before you actually get into the kitchen to mix the dough and make the icing, get all of your ingredients ready, get everything prepped, because when you go into that recipe prepared, it just makes it a lot easier than digging around in your kitchen wondering if you have meringue powder, for example, which is the uh, key ingredient in the royal icing. So really just taking some time to read through the recipes, um, the baking tips. I know in the Crafted Cookie, I have lots of tips about baking the cookies and making the icing. Um, and just taking the time to browse through those to really set yourself up for success. And then for me, um, just paying attention to your measurements and just taking your time um, you know baking is a really cool hobby because it can be a big stress reliever it's really neat to create something start to finish and have an end result and so I think that's a lot a lot of people jumped into cookie decorating during the pandemic because it really is one of those things that you can see your results pretty quickly and it's a lot of fun plus you can eat your project too so Absolutely. it's a win-win that would be I I, my cookies would never get made. I would just sit there and eat the frosting and the dough. It would be wonderful. Um, that happens here, too. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's start with our questions. This first one is from Melissa Slayan. Uh, Melissa wants to know, generally speaking, how long do you uh, let dry until adding the face, I assume, to a cookie? Yeah, because the face is black icing, I would allow an hour for that base icing to dry because if you rush it, especially on that yellow icing, if that yellow icing on that mustard bottle is still wet, the black from the details on the eyes will leach into that yellow and it... Um, you know, it'll look a little blurred. So I recommend at least an hour before you add those details, especially if it's two really contrasting colors. Perfect. Uh, this next question is from D. Withy. Uh, Anne, I've gotten the cookie decorating bug and find your teaching style and videos to be absolutely terrific. As a man, I find most decorating examples I come across to be very, quote, cutesy. Uh -huh. <laughs> suggestion for finding themes or kits that are interesting but perhaps a touch more uh, guy friendly that is a great question I am guilty of cutesy just because I think that's my natural personality and my creativity style but you know you can always take a project for example there's a rainbow birthday set in the beginning using those same instructions but changing the icing colors that fit a palette that you are more interested in mm -hmm. um, there are literally thousands of different different types of cookie cutters in this world and they're not all cutesy mm -hmm. um, and so just seeking out some of those things that you I don't know what your interests are or what they might be um, even on the hot dog for example um, it's a it's a fun cookie even without the cute face so you can always modify the instructions to fit your decorating style but um, let's say, for example, you're into, I don't know, lacrosse. I don't know why I'm thinking <laughs> lacrosse. <laughs> Maybe you're not into lacrosse. But just, um, you know, looking for inspiration uh, on 
um, Google, you can get inspired yeah. to see what other, you know, lacrosse cookies might be out there. And so just kind of thinking through what you want to create. Um, but there's probably a cutter for it. I mean, there are so many different cutter designs out there. Absolutely. And I was going to say, I remember when I was a kid, uh, still am very into hockey, but I was very into hockey and my favorite hockey team, the Red Wings, had a cookie cutter that was shaped like your symbol. So I'm willing to bet whoever your team is, there probably is a cookie cutter for that team and you can make, you know, your your team's cookies. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. All right. This next one is from Kelly Cooksey. What consistency was your green lettuce? That is a stiff icing consistency. So in the beginning, when I showed the icing in the bowl at the very beginning, before I added any water to it, that is what I used for that green lettuce. And the reason that I use that stiffer icing is just so that it holds its shape. If the icing is too thin, it'll just kind of blob together. You won't see um, some of the definition on there. Actually, yeah, do the down camera. Uh, you won't see some of the definition there in the leaves that make that texture so much fun. It will definitely kind of um, even out and sort of bump into each other and not have so much detail. So use stiff icing um, for a detail like that, Kelly. Very cool. Uh, this next one is from Trish P. Trish wants to know, what are optional recipes for cookie decorating other than chocolate and vanilla? Yeah, oh my goodness. There are... Um, I, in the crafted cookie, the recipe that I share, I use a butter vanilla emulsion. And the brand of emulsion that I like to use is Loran's. And they have tons of flavoring, um, lemon, pumpkin spice in the fall. Um, and typically these emulsions are an easy substitution where you can take um, you know, teaspoon for teaspoon, subbing out those flavors. And so um, that's a one great, really easy way to explore with flavors is using those different emulsions. And I mean, there's probably two, do two dozen different flavors wow. of those. Yeah, when I first started baking, um, I invited my neighbors over and I had made three different recipes that I really liked. And everybody picked the butter vanilla and so that's what I went with this is 13 years ago <laughs> which is cool so yeah it's fun to explore um, you know toffee cinnamon roll uh, there's a lot of a lot of options out there very cool uh, this next question is from Julie Cook how did you make the vents on the grill so Julie there are instructions um, in the book for the grill but that is just a little bit of that gray icing. I piped it in a square and flooded it in. And then I used a food marker. So it's food color in a marker and just dotted those little dots on there. But it's funny, that little vent is one of my favorite details. Um, I don't know, it just looks so cute on that guy. So again, back to the cutesy cookies, but you know, that's a detail you really can't miss. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then our final question, it looks like, this is from Sherry Brooks. And just so you know, um, there, there's currently a recipe swap going on in the live stream chat. There, there's a oh, change awesome. of <laughs> what the proper fall cookie ratio for spices is. So there's, you've got a, we've got a good lively group right now. Um, but Yay. the question is, what brand of food coloring do you recommend? And this is from Sherry Brooks. So Sherry, I'm not super snobby really about anything related to cookie decorating and I've used several different brands with success. So in the book, I am using the Chef Master gels. Um, in these liquid gels, these are concentrated color. There are 36 different gels available and I've used them all in the book. So all 36 have been used if you wanna see um, lots of different color combinations, um, which is kind of cool. I did that intentionally just to make sure I used all of those gels, but you might also like um, Wilton, which is easy to find at um, big box stores and big box craft stores. Um, Americolor is another popular brand. Lux has a brand. And then there's a lot of other small cookie businesses that sell gels as well. Um, but I do prefer the Chef Master. I just find the results to be consistent. And that's what we carry on flowerbox.com. But you can use um, a variety of brands with confidence. I've tried all of them. And um, I, I haven't found one that I didn't like. So 
but I do like the gels. They're, they are different than what you find at the grocery store, like those little McCormicks. They almost look like um, they have, like, the pointy uh, top on them. I don't know why I'm doing that on my head, like a party hat almost. Those are really watery, um, and those can affect the consistency of your icing. So I do recommend trying a gel. You'll use less of the color, and you'll get more vibrant icing colors. Great. Uh, I lied. We do have one more question. People keep trickling them in. Uh, this one is from Mary um, Fontenot, and they would like to know, do you use vanilla along with other flavor emulsions? I typically use, and I think I got into this habit, typically use the butter vanilla for um, most of my cookie decorating because I have a, a huge... Um, 20 quart mixer in my cookie studio and so I mix large batches of that same recipe over and over. In my icing I do prefer to use a clear vanilla just so that I don't impact the color of the icing although I will say um, using the McCormick's pure vanilla the brown vanilla mm -hmm. um, I did use that for years that is totally fine if that's what you have access to um, but now I have switched over to the clear vanilla. Um, there's a couple different brands out there. Wilton it has one. Um, I think McCormick's does. I use the Genie brand. Um, that's what we carry in our shop. I just like the flavor of it. So some of those flavor things really do come down to personal taste. And I just uh, encourage you to have fun exploring when you're making different batches, um, trying out different flavors. Yeah, so Absolutely. Um, well, it has come to that point in the night where I have to be shameless and plug my store. I'm very sorry for all the wonderful people who came just to look at cookies and talk to Anne. But if this sounds like fun to you and you somehow don't have a copy yet of The Crafted Cookie, A Beginner's Guide to Baking and Decorating Cookies for Every Occasion, you can get a copy. You can get a copy at Town Book Center. You can support a local bookstore. Uh, we're right here in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. We are across the street from the largest Wegmans in the country. So you can get the book. Go across the street, get what we need, go home, bake some cookies, bring some back for us. We like cookies here at the store. Um, and, and you're all set. If you are not in Pennsylvania or you are not comfortable being out and about yet, that is totally fine. You can always shop with us online at townbc.com. That's T-O-W-N as in Nike, E as in Echo, B as in Bravo, C as in Charlie.com. And uh, I know I said no more questions, but we have another question. And then I'm, I'm really done after this. We can't. We will, otherwise, Anne will be here all night, and I'll get an angry email from someone. Not from her. She's delightful. But someone else will email me and go, you can't have Anne on for 18 hours. Um, all right. So, Leah Houston wants to know, have you ever experimented with different icing flavors? Um, I, I have done lemon, because lemon is my favorite flavor. So, I've done a lemon cookie and a lemon icing. And I did use the lemon emulsion in the cookie dough with some lemon zest mm -hmm. as well okay. and that really made a bright cookie flavor then i saved the lemon and used it was like two to three tablespoons of lemon juice in the royal icing to get that lemon you can overdo it you know so kind of maybe take a little couple taste tests to make sure you have just the right amount of lemon juice in there but but yeah in the icing um definitely for summer you can't go wrong with lemon Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, Anne, thank you so much for joining us. And to all the lovely people who came out tonight, thank you all for being here. Um, if you came here at the end and you went, oh, but I didn't get to hear an answer on something or I missed this thing in the video, the video is going to be up on our YouTube channel. You can watch it in total at any time. I tend to drive around and listen to our YouTube videos, but I just like listening to myself talk. Um, all right. Thanks again, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.